السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. May peace be upon every single one of us. May peace be upon all the inhabitants of this earth. And may Allah Almighty grant us all good guidance and grant us the best of this world and the next. Amin. I didn't really say exactly what the MC said I said, but let me say what I did say. I will not stop for photos because we didn't come here to take photos, but you can take as many photos as you want without stopping me. That's roughly what I said. So to ask me, can I take a picture? You don't need to ask because you're already taking pictures. Secondly is, if you want me to stop to take a picture, it's not going to be possible because we will be walking and there are so many people and mashallah, I'm delighted to be at this venue, mashallah. The center of excellence. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us excellence. If you were to count the grains of sand in the deserts of Arabia, would you be able to count them? No matter how advanced technology is, you might be able to count grains of sand within a small space, but not in the desert. Do you realize that every grain of sand in the desert of Arabia and every say, grain of sand all over the world is not only created by Allah Almighty, but He knows about it and He is in control of it. Subhanallah. The grain of sand. Similarly, every droplet of water, and you and I know if I were to take a cup of water, how many molecules of H2O there are in there is almost impossible to count. Imagine the ocean. We see the Atlantic Ocean and we see so many other oceans. Do you know that Allah Almighty is aware of every single droplet of water? Not only aware, but in control of the droplet. And do you realize these are only two things we're speaking about, but there are rocks, there's formation, there is a lot under the ground, there's there are so many other things, the birds, the ants, the creatures are unknown to us. Many of you living here in Trinidad and Tobago, you would probably have done some scuba diving at some point, looking at the life under the water. I've had the good fortune of being to a certain extent among those who did a bit of a scuba dive and I tell you something it is mind-boggling just to see the type of fish just to see the movement to see what there is it is just mind-boggling every single creature is created by Allah nothing comes about by coincidence people say well man just appeared man just popped out of nowhere and everything else just popped out of nowhere. You and I know for a fact that if you have a hat on your head, it can never ever find its way on your head. How do you think you in your entirety found your way onto earth? When just your hat cannot get onto your head, nothing. Your clothing cannot just suddenly grow on a tree or you find, wow, there is clothing that fits me that suddenly under the ground, it's from wherever or we found it in the ocean or the cotton plantation had something my size impossible you would be mental if you actually thought that so if it is impossible for something that you and i have to put on us to just have popped out of nowhere don't you think that it would be absolutely impossible for us in our entirety to pop out of nowhere or to just be there so from this we as believers have always believed that there is a maker a maker who made us just like i know for a fact just like i know for a fact that the vehicles we find here in the city port of spain are manufactured and people had to go to the mountains and wherever else to mine the steel and whatever else it may have been until we had aluminum and steel and so much more and together we produced a motor vehicle 
We know that we were made by a creator. He created everything. And we also know that we are only on earth for a short period of time. How do I know that? Because others have left before me. People have left in my lifetime. People younger than me, older than me, my age. I've seen them go. So I know I have to also go. You have to go. We all have to go. Do you have an option? No. You don't have an option. You're going to go. Where are you going to go? Well, I can tell you wherever I came from. <laughs> Subhanallah. Where did you come from? I came from somewhere. I may not recall and remember. In fact, I can't even recall and remember the womb of my own mother. But I was there. How many of you were not in the wombs of your mothers at all? Put up your hands. Do I see a hand? Do I see a hand? Do I see a hand? No, I don't. Besides a few of you fanning your faces, you're lucky. I'm not as lucky as you are. We're in the center of excellence and I pray that the next time I come, the air condition will be working. Perhaps it's the second or third time I'm here and it's always been the same. Is that Trini excellence? Only by speaking about it would we make a difference. Otherwise, we'd be here 20 times and it would still be the same. If anything, the next time we come, perhaps these beautiful fans might not be working as well. Maybe someone forgot to say, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, and therefore they hit it with the evil eye, didn't they? Anyway, Masha, it's beautiful because we see the coolness of the faces of the people, no matter how much we're sweating. People pay to sweat. When I arrived yesterday, I told my colleague, I said, do you know what? Thank Allah. You're having a free sauna. You should be paying for every 15 minutes a few dollars. Yeah. When I leave Trinidad, I'm sure my skin's going to be smooth and cool. Beautiful. Detox. What happened? I sweated my face out. Mashallah. So getting back to the subject, I know that Allah made me. I remember the earliest memories perhaps in my early childhood and many of us, if I were to ask you, what's your earliest memories? That'd be something maybe three years old, four years old. That's your earliest memories. Some might maybe a little bit earlier, but never before that. But where were you? You were in the womb of your mother. You don't remember. You were born. Do you remember the day you were born? Do you remember how you came onto earth? Were you by cesarean or normal birth? You don't even remember. You were told. You don't even know your date of birth. Yourself, you were told about it. They could have made a blunder. I've come across people who say, I wasn't born on that day, but when my father went, he just wrote that date. I said, went where? Went where? It has happened to people. But Allah knows. Whoever made you knows. Why did he not want me to remember the day I was born and the day I was in the womb of my mother? In order for you to know that man, you don't know everything and you will never know everything. That's the reason. One of the reasons. The Almighty wants you with your brain and your capacity and only five senses you've been given, but there are more than 20 different senses. You don't even have more than five. With these five senses, your capacity is only to a certain degree. You cannot see what others would term and what we would term the unseen to us. Your eyes can only see certain things based on what exactly your eyes were created for by Allah Almighty. He didn't want you to see more than that. But if you have nowadays, technology shows you a little bit more in the atmosphere. You have microscopes, you have vision, you have so much more. You can use this, but it's going to continue to progress and proceed until man discovers things he never imagined existed. We believe that there is life of angels. Do you see the angels? No. No matter how much your mother says, my angel, my angel. That's not the angel we're talking about, right? Luckily, I said your mother could have been someone else. But my brothers and sisters, 
Look at these five senses. The Almighty has given them to you in order for you to excel, in order for you to grow, in order for you to recognize, in order for you to ask questions, in order for you to try, in order for you to lead a beautiful life, in order for you to use your common sense, which is uncontaminated. When I say uncontaminated, the contamination is mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, where he says, your surroundings contaminate you. When you're born, you're born on nature, natural. If you were just yourself alone in an, on an island, perhaps, if you could survive somehow without anyone saying anything to you, you would always know I have been made by a maker. You would always know what's right and wrong generally. You would come to the conclusions without any contamination. The minute you're contaminated, you may not then understand what's right and wrong until you begin to question. You grow of age. You start questioning, learning, checking, and then you use your common sense. Oh, okay. Sometimes the contamination is so strong that it takes you a long time to break loose from the shackles of this contamination. مَا مِنْ مَوْلُودٍ إِلَّا وَيُولَدُ عَلَى الْفِطْرَةِ فَأَبَوَاهُ يُهَوِّدَانِهِ أَوْ يُنَصِّرَانِهِ أَوْ يُمَجِّسَانِهِ No child is born except that they are born upon fitra, upon nature. Their parents then make them this faith or the other faith, be they Jews or Christians or whatever else they may be, even Muslim. Or in the case of what we see around us, those without a faith, what happens? Your surroundings, you grew up in a certain way. You grew up with certain norms. As you grew up, you felt this was normal. People on another part of the world, in another part of the world, felt something else was normal. And in a third part of the world, they felt a third thing was normal. And in a fourth part of the world, they felt a fourth thing was normal. Allah Almighty tells us that this contamination comes from your surroundings. Two types of contamination. In your faith, and in the rest of everything else. In your culture, you find different cultures. People speak different languages. Allah says from amongst his signs, the signs of the Almighty is that he has created you different colors, different races, different languages. You speak differently. All of this is absolutely unique. It's from Allah. It's not wrong for you to speak a language I don't understand or a dialect of English that you speak, for example, in Trinidad, that we would really think you're speaking some Portuguese or French for us. Wow. It's, it's so difficult sometimes for someone who hasn't stayed here for a bit. You're just asking the person how they are and they're like, sorry. And then you repeat it. I don't know how you say it. You repeat, sorry, what did you say? I am asking you, how are you? Okay, thank you, thank you. I'm fine, I'm okay. Besides, my ears can't hear pro properly, you know. And the same would apply to me. If I were to speak to you in a dialect of my part of the world, you wouldn't know. Some languages sound so vulgar. All that is a sign that the Almighty has blessed you with a brain. He wants you to use it. He wants you to use it. When you were little, you didn't know a thing. Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shay'a wa ja'ala lakum as-sam'a wal-absara wal-af'ida When Allah took you out of the wombs of your mothers, you didn't know anything, but He gave you the sight. He gave you the hearing. He gave you the heart. He expects you to learn things. What language do you know? You know the language of those who you first heard speaking as you were born and you grew up. That's the language. They call it a mother tongue. What's your mother tongue? They've never called it a father tongue. Do you know why? Well, I don't either. It's a mother tongue, subhanallah. Your mom spoke that, I guess. Or it's the first language you learnt. The one you know the best is called your mother tongue. And you learnt the words. And as you grew older, you spoke to others. And you learnt an accent. And you learned the way to speak. 
And if you went to a certain school, people distinguished you from those who went to another school. What is all this? It goes to show you, oh man, you are tuned to the way those around you wanted you to be tuned. And at times, you will be tied down by the shackles of that tuning unless you break loose. That's what life is all about. How do I break loose? Question, ask, see, learn, look at the alternatives on earth, check what they are, ask yourself, don't just fall for anything you hear. That is what we are taught. Allah says, ask, ask those who don't know. Sorry, ask those who know if you don't know. Look around, compare, see, get guidance from revelation. Billions of people have told you that there was a man known as Adam and a woman known as Eve. The Christians will confirm that all the denominations, the Muslims will confirm it, all the denominations, the Jews will confirm it, all the denominations and many others will also confirm it. So I believe there was a man known as Adam. He was the first of my species. Why? Because trillions, quadrillions, nonillions, decillions of people. Mashallah, I know my numbers. Can you see? Learned them. I learned them. They have confirmed this. It can't be just a joke. It can't be that it's a lie. They said we started off from one and so on. And so I believe it. But there will be others who might not. Well, it's up to them if, if their findings found something that I find totally wrong. Ah, that's up to you. But I can talk to you. You can talk to me. I can let you know why I say what I say. Let's talk about it. But bear in mind, man will never know every single thing. And he doesn't. I give you one quick example. If I told you, I asked you moments ago, do you know the number of grains of sand in the desert? And you said no. Do you know of any apparatus that can count the number of grains of sand in the desert? And the answer is no, no way. Not in my brain and not in the foreseeable future is that going to happen. But if I were to tell you how many planets are there in the in space the true answer is perhaps as many as the grains of sand in the desert you might say no we can count them no we cannot we haven't there is a james webb telescope google about it check it it's live now you can download the app and check what's going on every day it's discovering thousands if not millions of planets that man did not know about I'm talking of now and it's discovering planets huger than anything we ever thought existed and all of it as this telescope keeps moving and going and so on it's just getting more and more images and sending them back to this earth oh man you are insignificant you are so small so tiny and you think you own the whole world I'm standing here, there are a few thousand people in front of me, mashallah. Lovely, beautiful souls. May Allah bless you all. May Allah help us eradicate our bad habits and help us develop our good habits. I tell you, from where I'm standing, I can see everyone. Let me get down and walk in the midst of the people. I will only be able to see a few people right next to me. Those behind, I can't because I'm slightly above on a stage. If I were to climb onto this roof I'd see people they would be smaller but they're not smaller in real life they're the same size because of altitude they appear smaller if I were to take off on an aircraft as I grow as I go higher the altitude increasing what happens I can just see people wave and then I can't see them then I can see the runway then I can't see it then I see the houses then I cannot see it then I see something, then I cannot see it, then I just know there's the earth down there. And if I were to go further, I might end up in space if I'm in a spacecraft and I just see a ball, like a tennis ball, and be, they will say, that's the earth. Do you know how many billion people are in that little tennis ball you can see now? Maybe eight to nine billion. Each one of them has hair. <laughs> Sorry to give you that example. And each one of them is worried about how that hair looks. And each one of them has to comb it or shave it. 
Each one of them has to groom themselves. Each one of them uses to to toothpaste or uses the toilet. Akramakumullah. Or each one of them perhaps needs to eat food. And how many are there? There are billions. Billions. Oh man, do you really think you are the boss and the king? You think you can't see the ants. If you were small, you would see ants in their trillions and like I said, gazillions. And by the way, gazillion is not a number. It's not a figure. It just means like so many that I don't know the number. That's what gazillions means. So that's how many we are. And as you go higher, you see the insignificance. You see less. And then I can take you the other way around. Take you the other way around. Say, I see my hand. I see my nails. I see, mashallah, the hair here. Then I put it under a microscope. And what happens? It zooms in. And then I can see the cells. Then I can see the nucleus. And then I can see more and more. And each one, each little nail has millions or billions of little cells. With this little nucleus, with a DNA that is so complicated that is in every single part of my body in its gazillions. That's also not a number, but it's just to show you how big it is. You know, when we were little, I used to say, those guys live far. My father would say, oh, they live far. And then my brother comes and say, they live far away. And my father says, well, if you're going to say far away or far away, does it increase the distance? No, it doesn't. It just makes you feel good. We have a habit. It's very tough. <laughs> just say it's very tough. That's all. Subhanallah. But we have a habit expression. What does it do? It just makes us feel good that we've tried to explain what we wanted. And subhanallah, it's amazing. So what I'm telling you is a fact. If I've touched something here and I leave, some time later, people can come here and check and look at the DNA on this particular piece of plastic and tell you this man was here and he touched this place. Imagine, what did I leave behind? That's the Almighty Allah. I want to tell you something else, unique. Do you know there is no repetition on earth? Done. Everything is absolutely unique. Today we are a few billion on earth, but if you were to count from the time of Adam to this point, there are billions and again, numbers we don't even know of people who've passed on this earth. They passed by here. They passed from the beginning. If there's eight, nine billion now, imagine how many they were over time. Subhanallah. And do you know what? From the first of our species to the last, every single person's fingerprint is different. Every single person's iris, whatever you call it, a print or a scan, is totally unique. Your DNA is absolutely you and you alone and no one else and no repetition and nothing and you could tell who's related to you and who's not to a degree, but it's not repeated. Never repeated. It hasn't been and it won't be. And I want to give you a bigger surprise. Every bird is unique. Every zebra has different stripes. Every cheetah and every leopard and every animal that you see has different spots and different marks. No two are ever the same and will ever be the same. Why? Your Lord is showing you, listen, I exist. And you know what? You are going to come back to me and I'm going to take account of you. You are responsible. You are going to stand in front of me on a day of judgment. And it's going to be you and you cannot lie that it was you or not you. Why? Because the evidence is overwhelming. The Quran speaks about it. Listen carefully. I'll read the verse in a few moments. But before I say it, look at how impressive this is. The uniqueness of your, of your identity is evidence that you are going to stand in front of your Lord on the day of judgment. And you are responsible for everything you said or did while you were on earth. What is the evidence of it? The fact that you are unique in your identity. There was a time 
when people could get away, even now, maybe in some places, in some cases, they could get away because they look similar to someone. They say, was that you? you say, no, it's a look-alike. Okay, fair enough. You might have won the case by convincing the judge there was a look-alike. It's becoming more and more difficult. I'm thankful that the Almighty has kept me living in an age where technology is so advanced that I can tell that definitely it was not the other guy. It was you. Imagine being accused of something and you were not the criminal. It has happened, but it's happening less. Because why? People can now prove it. On that day, Allah says their tongues will bear witness against them. Their hands will bear witness against them. Their feet, their legs will bear witness against them regarding what they used to do. How? I don't know, but I do know technologically it's true. My thumbprint is everywhere. My saliva would determine exactly who I am. And if I were to walk somewhere, you can tell. And technology is going to advance more and more even after our time on earth to the degree that your voices will be able to be brought back. I've been reading about it and it's already in the pipeline. Who spoke here a hundred years ago? You may be able to bring back that voice and listen to it and see what they said. Who recorded it? No recording. It's just when you speak, the uniqueness of the frequency is maintained in the atmosphere. Did you ever know that? There we are. Go read about it. It will fresh, it will liven you up in your relationship with your maker. Oh my Lord, you are the greatest. Here I am. Help me to be the best so that I'm not an embarrassment for myself and against myself. So can you imagine? Everything is unique. Your voice is your voice. The exact voice is absolutely unique. We do know that AI is playing a fool with the world because they're making people say in videos that which they didn't say using their voices. I'm sure some of you must have seen a few clips of me where people have created things and made us say things, right? But deep down, if you're intelligent enough, you would know this is actually fake straight away. And now they are coming up with law in some countries and it's going to be global soon where you would have to state by law that this is artificial intelligence. Otherwise, we could create criminals of innocent people. You have to state by law, this is artificial intelligence. All of this goes to show something. It goes to show there is a maker. He's made me. I'm going to go back to him. When I go back to him, he is going to take account of my deeds. But one thing I know, he's most merciful, most kind, as much as he is just and severe. Justice because if you're a criminal, you need to pay. If I've stolen from you and you were unable to get the right back from me, or I ran away somehow with a loophole in the law of the land, perhaps you haven't forgiven me and so on the day of judgment, wouldn't you like to see justice? The Almighty will never say, I am so merciful, you killed so many people, but it's okay, never mind. Uh, those people want justice. The Almighty says, if you took it from someone else, I am not going to get involved. Seek forgiveness from them. If they forgive you, good enough. If they don't, you have to serve the sentence. But my Lord is merciful. That's why we always say when you've wronged someone, go to them and say, I'm sorry, I wronged you. And watch your tongue, watch how you speak. We see a lot of people say a lot of things. Many people, keyboard warriors. I call them those who massage. I call them those who massage their phone screens. It's no longer a keyboard warrior. You're sitting there rubbing your phone screen the whole day. You're just rubbing it the whole day, massaging all the pressure points of your phone, not realizing you're a big warrior. You're swearing people. You're accusing people. You're creating havoc. You're creating problems. You can create warfare and all that. And you're just massaging in your bed. If they had to see you, you're so timid. You'd be scared. You'd need a diaper. That's what would happen. But wow, 
Don't you think there's a Lord watching you? Don't you think you're going to pay for what you say? Don't you think you're going to pay for what you've done? So don't you want a good payment? So do good. You get paid good, mashallah. <laughs> this is Allah. He's created something amazing. He wants us only to recognize him. So Abraham's call in the desert was connected to the recognition of the maker. One after the other, when he was little, he began to question. He asked his father, what are you doing? Father says, I'm worshipping. Worshipping what? Well, these things that I've made with my own hands. And Ibrahim alayhi salam says, no, ma, my dear father, that's not how it should be. You worship the one who made you and him alone. Ya abati inni qad jaani min al-ilmi ma lam ya'tika fattabi'ni ahdika siratan sawiyya Beautiful verse of the Quran in Arabic. Abraham tells his father, Oh my father, knowledge has come to me. I know something you don't know. Follow me, I'll guide you to the path. His father was too arrogant, no way. How many of us, our children know more than us? If it's a worldly matter, we're quick to say, show me how to use this phone. Show me what's TikTok. And your, your small three-year-old is telling you, well, TikTok is something so nice. Why nice? Because they got all the ticking and the talking happening there. That's the last thing the child should have said. Because then the, when the mother gets onto TikTok, the child is neglected. Khalas. Should have been the other way. Learn to discipline yourself. I'm not saying technology as a whole is bad or good, but it has, it's a double-edged sword. You use it. You can use it brilliantly. You can use it to earn a living. You can use it to learn so many beautiful things. It can change you, but you can also use it to destroy yourself. So just watch it. Just be careful. That's technology. The people physically around you are owed your presence before those whom you find on the phone. If you have wasted your time on the phone, laughing, chatting, joking with people whom you've never seen, you may never see, you've never met, you may never meet, and you are neglecting those who are living with you, you are at a loss. You are at a loss. Speak to your wife, speak to your husband, smile at them, tell them how much you love them. On the phone, it's so easy. You, one one, like I say, massage, one pressure point, plim, and a big heart comes out as though you love, and you're not even in love at all. And the guy comes and just, he just hits that about 50, 60 times, and the woman is melted, melted. And here you have the guy living with you, your own husband. He can do whatever, but you don't melt. It's an issue. We are taught to use things that ha you have been blessed with in a good way. I can never tell you that this is totally bad or totally good. I can tell you it's like a knife or a gun. You be careful that when you have a gun and a weapon, surely people will have to tell you and you know before you get the license, you have to learn how to use it. Be careful. Hey, watch out. Don't just flash it. Don't just show it. Don't just do this. Don't just do that. Because it's a dangerous weapon, but it could save your life, perhaps. Right? The same applies to anything else. When Ibrahim, alayhi salam, Abraham, may peace be on him, questioned his father, his father didn't want to know. He says, hey, keep quiet. I'll punish you. Who do you think you're talking to? Because his life would have to change so much in order to listen to the son of his. And the son, what was he doing? He was just watching from a young age and questioning. So Abraham, the first call was the call to his own father, Azar. وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ لِأَبِيهِ Azar. Remember the time when Abraham told his father or said to his father, Azar. What did he say? He says, how can you worship this? And that was a question that led to so many other things we have two days to talk about that. But Ibrahim was intelligent. He knew that if I 
have my maker with me who made me. He will take care of me. He will protect me against all odds. Nobody will ever be able to harm me. And I'm going to try my best. If he has willed something, nobody can stop it. And if he has not willed something, nobody can give it to me. And so he was determined. He went to his father and said what he did. Now, my brothers and sisters, this first speech that I'm delivering here, primarily, my intention was just to show us how unique we are and how that uniqueness alone leads us to appreciate the maker and the fact that we're going to go back to him and we're answerable to him. If there was no big deal about the day of judgment, we could have been the same. You could have had 50, 60 people all the same with same DNA, same look, same this, same that, because there was no big deal about resurrection. But because there is a day of judgment, we have to be unique. Everything and everyone has to be unique. You did this to this person, this day. You cannot deny. When we were younger, and I remember first reading some of these verses of the scriptures, the Quran, and the issue of the day of judgment and so on, and how Allah will weigh your deeds and how your deeds will be shown to you. And we used to wonder how. Later on, we had a CCTV that came out. CCTV came out and now you can see everything real time. I can watch what's going on back in Johannesburg from here now. And if we capture it, I can see what happened yesterday and the day before, depending on what memory I have and my settings, I can watch going back seven days and even more. Is it not possible for the Lord of the worlds to take you back with much more sophisticated CCTV, if we can call it, that goes back to the beginning of the creation of man and even before? And he shows you, look, this is what you did. Are you going to deny anything? Allah says, يَوْمَ تَجِدُ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَّا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ مُحْضَرًا on that day, every single human will see all his good deeds right in front of him. Here's your good deeds. They're all in front of you. And the bad deeds will also be seen and the person will wish that there was a massive distance between him or her and the bad deeds. How will I see those deeds in a unique way? Allah knows. But now I can understand. I remember when I learned years ago about how Allah weighs the deeds on the day of judgment, good deeds and bad deeds on the scale, right? And we used to wonder how we were taught. Don't ask how the fact that revelation mentions it, believe it, learn it, teach it to others and it's going to happen today. I can record right now. I'm recording what I'm saying on this device in front of me. And it's telling me I've spoken for 38 minutes, 11 seconds. And it's telling me that it's worth 18 megabytes in MP3 format. How many megabytes in MP3 format? 18 megabytes. If I speak for longer, it will be 19, 20. Is this not a weight? It might not be heavy this way, but it's somehow a measurement. This speech is being measured. If it's high definition, big quality, subhanallah, video, audio, you probably would have terabytes. Right? And if it's MP3, it's less. And if it's wave format, it's a bit more. You know. Too big, too small, the files and the folders. If this is possible for humans, to record you and to keep it in a certain measurement. Do you think your Lord cannot measure your speech? When one of the women said that this other person was very short, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, and it was behind her back. So it was backbiting because it was a negative statement about another person. He says, Wallahi, I swear by Allah, 
if you put this statement in ink form and put that droplet into the ocean, it would change the color of the ocean. That's how serious it is. That means it was concentrated ink. How can you say something derogatory about your brothers and sisters behind their backs? It's prohibited as a Muslim, as a believer. You want to talk about someone behind their backs? Did you know? It is a major sin to say something negative about them. Say positive or keep quiet. Someone says, you know, that sister, you know, she, the minute they spoil their face, tell them, please keep quiet. She's a lovely sister. Jazakallah khair. Thank you so much and move. You can tell that what they want to say. But what happens today? We live in an age of social media. Even if there's nothing negative, we'll create something negative. You see the way her eyes are. I'm sure there's something in there. Can't you see jealousy in these eyes? And then the sister says, Ah, yeah, it looks, sounds right. Yeah, they're jealous eyes. I told you. Then she goes to a third person and says, You know, the other sister said this woman's jealous. You can see it from her eyes. Hey, you came to me telling me, Look at these eyes. And now that I slightly nodded my head, you went out and the statement changed that I said it. Isn't that happening? Wallah, it happens every day. You know why? We've forgotten the Almighty and the Day of Judgment and the Day of Reckoning. Here is Muhammad, peace be upon him, saying, whoever believes in his Maker, in Allah, and whoever believes there is a Day of Reckoning, should either utter that which is good or remain silent. What powerful advice. Do you believe in the last day? You do. Well then, say something good or keep quiet. Someone tries to push you, keep quiet. Yesterday, the brothers pushed me into the pool, if you saw. I kept quiet. What could I do? And then when we posted this thing online, people said, you said the F word. Astaghfirullah. I said the A sentence, and that's Astaghfirullah. What F word? It's not even in my vocab. May Allah Almighty grant us ease. They were hearing things. You know why? When it happened, they said it themselves. Luckily, I didn't take names, so I'm not backbiting anyone. But my brothers and sisters, the point is, sometimes people push us to do things that are wrong. You're accountable. You are responsible. Your deeds are yours. Don't get pushed. And if you do, just ask Allah's forgiveness. And if you've wronged someone, don't be embarrassed to just say, please, my sister, just forgive me. You might not want to know everything. You might say, just forgive me. A few things have happened. Please forgive me. You know, I said a few things, whatever. They might say, you're forgiven. And guess what? They have a right to say you're not forgiven. In that case, what do you do? Well, you can try again after some time. You, can, might, you might want to do a good deed or two on their behalf. May Allah Almighty forgive all of us. So, the theme, I want to congratulate the Muslim events Trinidad for this beautiful theme, Abraham's call in the desert. The idea is here's one man recognizing his maker he's in the desert and there is a call that's made the call the core of it was definitely the call for the pilgrimage where the worship of allah alone but at the same time it started at a certain point and this opening speech was connected to it i am convinced i have a maker and I'm convinced that I have to go back to him. And I'm convinced that he's going to hold me accountable for everything. But I'm also convinced he's kind, he's merciful. And I know he's amazing. Because he's already given me things I don't even deserve. Without payment. If it was up to any one of us, the kindest of us would probably charge. Charge what? For the 136,000 hearts, heartbeats a day. You watch the heart. Go to your YouTube, your phone, or anywhere, TikTok, Instagram. Type out heartbeat, human heartbeat. Check it out. That's happening within you right now. The force, the power, and you can't even hear it. It doesn't even disturb you when you're asleep, unless your pulse is a bit much and you hear it in your ears. When I was little, I used to think there was someone under my pillow, under my bed. I think a lot of us probably did. I just used to hear doom, doom. I said, there's a guy knocking. There's a guy knocking. There's a guy knocking. I used to say it so many times that I think my mother began to believe me. And after some time, where, where, who, what? And I realized, no, do you know what? It's just the pulse that I can, perhaps in my ear, it's just pulsating, you know? That's what it is. No one. 
But do you hear it? Right now, I don't hear it. You don't hear a thing. And it keeps going and going. Forget about solar energy. Forget about electric. Forget about fossil fuel. Forget about anything and everything. It is moving by the power of your Lord. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Today you are looking at me with your eyes. You might have glasses or no glasses, contact lenses or none. And I tell you something, it is the power of your Lord that allows you to see in full color without any form of synchronization. It's done for you automatic. Thank your Lord. He's given you things that you could not afford. When something goes wrong with our hearts, we quickly rush. May Allah grant cure to all those who are sick and ill. We rush where? We rush to the doctor. The doctor wants to charge you. No payment. Please stay outside. What happened? There we are. And what went wrong with you? Well, I had a little bit of a stroke or a heart attack or a little problem in the way my heart was beating. Your world will turn upside down because of that slight movement of your heartbeat in the wrong way. But when it happened correctly for 50 years, you forgot about your Lord. You forgot about your Lord. Now that it's moved, it moves at times because your Lord loves you. He wants you to turn to him. He's showing you, you have the money, you have the power. You have a family, you have the children, you have the grandchildren, you have everything. Please just come to pray. That's all. Because you're not praying, we're going to tap you towards us. Here goes. You have a tap of the heart. Ah, oh, what happened? I better go to pray. For the first time in your life, you thought about prayer. Do you know why? You got the money. It couldn't stop that. You got the people. It couldn't stop it. You got the power and authority on earth. It couldn't stop it. You've got everything. It couldn't stop it. You were only lacking your Lord. You did not have him. You brought him into your life. Then you don't even mind going back to him. May Allah bless all of us. My brothers and sisters, I've spoken for 45 minutes and when I came up here, they told me, how long will you speak for? Do you want to know my answer? It's a bit embarrassing. <laughs> I said, well, if I'm sweating and it's hot, I might just speak for about half an hour. But if it's cool and relaxed, then inshallah, we'll speak for longer. As much as I am sweating, but there is a sense of coolness because of such beautiful faces seated here in front of me. If I'm feeling hot and I'm sweating, I'm sure you're feeling equally hot, if not more. Perhaps there are a few fans blowing in my direction. I don't know if it's just me feeling that or just the movement of these little leaves here that's making me feel a bit cool. Subhanallah. Is that a Trini trick? Inshallah, I see you later on this evening when we continue with this. In the meantime, aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته